I'm Alice Peterson, and this very month marks my 20th year of the great, great fortune of serving on Sanctuary's Board of Directors. Before my life included Sanctuary, I thought that people did community service. Um, they were involved with organizations like this one as a way to give back, to lift others up. And I quickly learned that the exact opposite is true. Like Catherine, the clients that I've worked with through my time at Sanctuary have made it clear that joy can be sought in the very darkest of places and that a broken heart can be full of generosity. Sanctuary and the critical set of issues it's dedicated to, which have evolved as the organization continues to learn and we all get smarter about what it takes to allow our clients to create a life of self-determination, has been the source of countless friendships that I truly cannot imagine my life without. One of those is with Tali Farhadi and Weinstein with whom I was set up, given our shared dedication to issues of gender violence. Which, let's be honest, if you've read her bio in the program, is kind of like introducing a recreational ping pong player to Serena Williams, because they're both devoted to racket sports. <laughs> Sorry, Tolly, I kind of won on that one. <laughs> Despite her countless accomplishments, I know with every certainty that this is only the beginning of Tolly's winning battle to make our society safe for all women, no matter how much or in many cases how little privilege they have. Every minute that I get to spend with this person makes me a better person, a smarter person, a kinder person, and there is truly no one who is at once more fierce and more compassionate than my friend. Tali, thank you so much for your tireless devotion, your brilliant mind, and your incredibly giving heart. For her deep commitment and her incredibly inspirational leadership, please, please join me in congratulating Tali on receiving the 2022 Zero Tolerance Award. Thank you, Alice. Uh, let's start by taking a moment to celebrate my friend Alice Peterson. <laughs> Alice started volunteering at Sanctuary just a few years out of college, translating to Spanish for clients who were in a pro bono divorce workshop. And here she is now, going out as the longest serving board member in Sanctuary's history, 20 years. I started my career as a federal prosecutor of violent crimes, murder, gun violence, drug trafficking. But it was only when I became a local prosecutor that I began to see violence differently and in different places. I learned that one out of six cases, 10,000 cases a year, in the Brooklyn DA's office involved domestic violence. That's not counting the sexual assaults, the crimes against children, the human trafficking that came into our office too. And that's also not counting the cases invisible to the office, because we know that nationwide, Something like half of all domestic violence cases are never reported to law enforcement. So that means for every case that we see, there is a case that we do not see. And I started to see domestic violence everywhere. In Brooklyn, for example, during the Trump presidency, I started arresting people for civil immigration law violations in and around our local courthouses. And we saw that this discouraged immigrant women from coming forward to report domestic violence against them. So we decided to sue ICE to get them out of our courthouses, and we won. 
And uh, let me just shout out to District Attorney Eric Gonzalez to thank him. He is sitting right here. Uh, uh, for his steadfast commitment to immigrant survivors. And then when the pandemic began, back in March of 2020, my husband Boaz and I, another great champion of women, we talked a lot about what we were not seeing, even though so much, so much of our world was visibly different. That is the violence inside homes where everybody, of course, was suddenly trapped. And we knew that that's where our support was needed the most, and we were grateful to Sanctuary for being on the front lines. Now, I know that tonight is a night of celebration, and I promise I am going to get to that. But before I do, I can't help but say something about the violence that I'm seeing right now all across the country. So of course, two weeks ago, yesterday, 19 children and two teachers were killed in a mass shooting in an elementary school in Uvalde, Texas. The 18-year-old shooter shot his grandmother right before he went to the school. And in the months before the massacre, the shooter threatened girls and young women online with sexual assault, including rape and kidnapping. Now, these facts may surprise you, but they shouldn't because the links between domestic violence and misogyny on the one hand and mass shooting on the other are well known. In over two thirds, two thirds of mass shootings in the United States, the perpetrator first killed an intimate partner or family member or had a history of domestic violence. Meanwhile, any day now, the Supreme Court is expected to overrule or seriously undermine Roe v. Wade and allow states to criminalize abortion. Boo, yeah. Uh, in at least 26 states, that means that abortion will be illegal, and poor women, teenagers, women in abusive relationships will face enormous obstacles to get an abortion and access to abortion will become another instrument of power and control in the abuser's arsenal. Meanwhile, we watched in horror last week as Amber Heard was vilified across social media and in court and may well be bankrupted for identifying herself as a victim of violence at home. Yeah, so that's the thing. Intimate partner violence, its sources, and its consequences are on display every day, interwoven with some of the biggest legal and cultural issues, issues of our time, from gun safety to choice. All of this can feel really overwhelming, but that is where sanctuary comes in. Because you, my friends at Sanctuary, you do not allow yourselves to give up. Person by person, you do the hard work of reaching out to survivors, of seeing them and their needs, and helping them to see the markers, the moments and the gestures that show the progress of their journeys away from violence. And closing out the evening, you know, I loved how we started with that video. And I was thinking as I was watching it that we're really lucky when something like a hug from a stranger or the exclamation of joy from a child feels like a small thing. And I'm full of admiration for Sanctuary for knowing that for survivors, those are really big things. They are evidence of resilience, of courage, of optimism, of commitment. And I thank you for bringing these small things into people's lives. Thank you for letting me be a part of your work and for this magnificent honor.